This uh, particular video is going to cover the very important process of setting up the throttle position sensor on one of the KTM Group four-stroke bikes. Now, whenever you flash one of our four-stroke performance tunes to one of these bikes using one of the new four-stroke capable ERMs, uh, the last thing that you need to do prior to actually riding the bike, once you've flashed the tune, is make sure that the throttle position sensor is set up correctly. Now this video is going to be broken into two parts. First of all, we will tell you uh, the fairly simple process of how to set up the sensor correctly. And then in the second part of the video, uh, I'll explain why it's so important. So first of all, what we need to do, uh, if you come over to the ERM, you'll see here on the dash screen near the bottom, we can see our current closed throttle voltage is 0.54. So that's a fairly standard uh, voltage uh, for a bike that idles normally. Uh, what we need to do is back off the red and the yellow uh, screw in adjusters on the throttle body and uh, make sure there's some slack in the cables. And then we need to check the voltage when the butterfly is fully closed and make sure that it's exactly 0.40 of a volt, which is the factory spec. So if we come down to the throttle body now, we can have a look where the uh, red and the yellow adjusters are. The red adjuster is on top of the throttle body. That's the one that sets the idle speed. And then the yellow adjuster is underneath. And that's the one that uh, essentially gives you the fast idle. So when you push that one upwards, when the bike is cold, it will allow the engine to, uh, to idle at a much faster rate uh, uh, and therefore warm up quicker. So I'm gonna reach in now and wind back that red adjuster. I can reach it. And if we watch the ERM screen as I do that, you'll see the voltage will drop. So as I'm winding back this red adjuster, uh, the butterfly is slowly but surely closing until it gets to its fully closed position. So there we go, that's not dropping anymore. I'll just reach under and double check the yellow one. I'll wind that a few turns to make sure that that isn't um, holding the, the butterfly open at all. No, that's not doing anything. And I'll just flick the throttle a few times, make sure it comes back to that same value. So there we go, you can see that we have a closed value of 0.39. Now the factory um, spec is 0.40. So what we're, gonna, uh, what we're going to do now is to loosen off the actual throttle position sensor on the left hand side of the uh, throttle body. Uh, and we're going to manually rotate it and then re-tighten it so that we achieve a voltage here of exactly 0.40. So if we come around to the other side of the bike now, there's a few things that we need to do. First of all, I'm gonna remove the seat and just lift the tank a bit. You can fully remove the tank if you like, but you don't need to. Now, I've already partially done this process. We need to remove the uh, engine mount here. Now, on different models of these bikes, whether they're KTM, Husqvarna or Gas Gas, the mounts will be slightly different, but there will always be a mount on this side. Uh, we then need a four millimeter um, Allen key and we can remove the bolts on the um, protective cover for the TPS. We then need to find the hose clamp at the front and at the rear of the throttle body and loosen those off. There's another one at the rear that's up high. Uh, and then, this is a bit easier done from the other side, we need to rotate the throttle body downwards so that we can reach in and remove that plastic cover. There we go, so the plastic cover's off. We can see the actual throttle position sensor there. Um, the next step is to take a T25 Torx bit and just gently loosen off the screws. You don't need to fully remove them, but just loosen them. And that will allow you in the next stage to manually rotate the TPS. So if we come back up to the ERM now. Okay, so we can see that now when we move the TPS by hand, you can see uh, the voltage will change. What we need to do now is settle it on 0.40 and then slowly tighten those two Torx bolts. Uh, just keeping an eye on the voltage because as you tighten those bolts, the voltage will change a little bit. So you need to make sure that by the time those two Torx bolts are fully done up, um, the TPS voltage is still at 0 0.40 and it can take a couple of attempts sometimes. Well, this one seems to be working straight away. So now we can just reverse the process that we did. Um, put the plastic cover back on, tighten up the two four millimeter Allen head bolts 
We can rotate the throttle position sensor so it's properly up and down, not, not tilted to one side. Uh, do up the hose clamps, front and back. <clears throat> and then finally, reinstall the uh, engine mount. We can then replace the tank, put that back into position properly. And put the seat back on. So now we have the throttle body back in position properly. The butterfly is still fully closed and we've got a TPS voltage of exactly 0 0.40, which is the factory spec. Now we're going to reach in again and screw in the red adjuster until we go back to where our idle voltage was, which for this particular bike was 0.54. So as I screw this in, the voltage will start to climb again and we'll settle it at 0.54 simply because that's where it was Previously, uh, different bikes will have slightly different voltages and that's okay. Generally, that'd be somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6. Uh, and then finally, I'll reach in underneath and I'm going to press upwards on the yellow adjuster so it clicks into place. And then I'm going to rotate it so that with it pressed upwards or, or clicked into position upwards, it gives us 0.1 of a volt more than our idle voltage. So in this case, our idle voltage was 0.54, so when the yellow adjuster is clicked um, into its upwards position, we want to see about 0.64 or thereabouts. So there it is. Now I'll just release the yellow adjuster, make sure it goes back down to 0.54, and I'll press it up again. Uh, it's 0.65, that's close enough. Now just so that you know, uh, a um, simple way to release that yellow adjuster when when you've uh, pushed it up normally you would push it up and it would stay in into place by itself you can always rotate forwards on the throttle and you'll hear a click and that will release uh, that yellow adjuster as well so that's just a little trick if you didn't already know that so now we've got the throttle position sensor set correctly to 0 0.40 of a volt uh, we've returned our red idle adjuster to where it was uh, before and we've also made sure that the yellow fast idle adjuster is uh, pretty much correct so the next thing that we need to do is we need to start the bike, um, set the idle speed to what we specify for our four-stroke performance tune, and we're going to let the bike idle. Uh, we're going to let it idle for quite a long period of time. As the bike is idling, provided it's in neutral, uh, there are no fault codes, uh, providing the idle speed is fast enough, uh, it will, the ECU will actually learn the idle voltage. So we'll go through that basic process now. I'm gonna start this bike. Uh, this is a 500, so I know that we want the idle to be between 1800 and 1900 RPM for this process to work. Uh, other capacities have different idle speeds, but they're all specified on our website or in the factory manuals. So I'm going to start this bike, let it warm up. As it's warming up, I'll just tweak the, the red adjuster if need be to get that idle around 1800 to 1900. And then we're just going to let, uh, um, sit here and, and let it idle until um, it's at least at 75 degrees uh, Celsius. The process of learning only begins at 75 degrees Celsius. So once it gets to 75, we let it continue idling uh, until about 90 or 100. There's no set amount of time. Uh, the ECU generally will learn what it needs to learn within a minute or two maximum. So we'll start this bike now. We'll double check the idle as it's warming up and then we'll just let it go. Speed up that idle. Uh, okay, so we've just spent a little while warming the bike up um, and you can see here it's at 95 or thereabouts Celsius. Uh, now during the process of warming up, I did push in the yellow fast idle adjuster just to quickly get it up around 75 as quickly as possible. But then once it gets to 75 and above, you do need to um, uh, just let it idle normally. So don't have the, the fast idle um, uh, pushed in and let it idle normally for a couple of minutes. And what is happening during that time is the ECU is 
looking at what the current closed um, uh, voltage is on the TPS. So in this case, it's hovering between 0.54 and 0.55. Uh, and it's trying to do some calculations to figure out a theoretical voltage if the engine was to be running at about 200 RPM less than where we set our idle speed. So for this particular 500, the idle speed is specified at 1800 to 1900. But what the ECU is trying to do is figure out a theoretical um, TPS voltage if the idle was actually around 1600. Um, so essentially this process is done. Like this ECU will now have learnt uh, what it needs to learn and you can go and ride this bike. If you want to double check that that process has worked properly, you can go to extras, then diagnostics, swipe across one tab. On the drop down, select TPS and then press run. And this will show you two voltages. So on the left hand side, we have our current idle voltage, which is the same as the previous screen, 0.54 to 0.55. And on the left, we have our um, uh, saved base voltage. So that is the voltage that the ECU has calculated as the voltage that would be required to run this engine at about 1600 RPM with the given tune. Now, you know that this process has worked if the, va if the value on the right is lower than the value on the left. If the two values are the same, the process has not worked and you need to repeat it and try and figure out why it didn't work. So in order for this process to have worked, uh, needs, you need to meet four criteria, and that is the idle speed needs to be within the factory spec. The bike needs to be in neutral. Uh, it needs to be above 75 degrees Celsius on, uh, on coolant temp, uh, and there can't be any fault codes present. So providing you meet all four of those and you let the, the engine idle for a period of time, what will happen is about, it seems to be about every 15 seconds or so, the ECU is attempting to relearn a, a new voltage. Um, initially, it will start at a voltage that's close to our idle voltage. And if you were on this screen while it was idling, you would notice the voltage on the right-hand side would slowly but surely drop. And then it would just stay at around, you know, a, a low voltage, in this case, 0.52. So as I said before, if you look at this screen and the two values are the same, you know it has not worked. In order for the ECU to run correctly and for the engine to run correctly, the voltage on the right must be lower than the voltage on the left. It's a very important process uh, and you've just got to let the uh, ECU do it at least once uh, before you start riding. But one thing to keep in mind is that every time you are riding and, the, and you meet those criteria, so for example, if you're on a ride and you pull up on a trail, put the bike in neutral and just let the, let the engine idle, if you're above 75 degrees coolant temp, it's going to instantly try and relearn the same value. So um, rather than just pulling up and stopping, each time you pull up two or three times during the day, pull up and let the bike idle for another 30 seconds or so, and then turn the engine off. That way it'll continually try and relearn and it, and it essentially will self-adjust for potential changes in uh, engine condition, um, you know, environment, fuel, uh, all sorts of different things. So um, it is actually quite clever in the way that it operates. So that's everything you need to know about setting up the TPS on a four stroke. Now, a lot of this info, particularly the info around um, the ECU learning the TPS voltage, uh, it's not necessarily common knowledge. Uh, we've uh, invested heavily in reverse engineering uh, this stock ECU. So these are things that we have learnt along the way. Um, uh, they are, um, I guess, factual details about the ECU. There is a lot of incorrect information, unfortunately, um, on the internet about how to set the TPS. Um, some of it's incorrect and some of it's just incomplete. Um, but what I've told you here is just, a, I guess, an overview of what's actually happening with the ECU. Um, it is very, very important to do this process. Uh, and just to recap, it's, it's important to allow the ECU time to learn uh, the TPS voltage uh, once you um, first flash one of our four-stroke performance tunes. So you definitely need to do that before the first time you ride. But then also, on any given ride, you can pull up at any particular time as long as the bike is in neutral and meets those other criteria uh, and give the ECU uh, time to allow, uh, sorry, allow the ECU time to uh, learn that uh, TPS voltage again because doing it that way will keep your bike in the best state of tune possible for as long as possible because the ECU will, to a, a moderate degree, will self-adjust for changes, as I said, in either engine condition or, um, you know, to a small degree, fuel type uh, and uh, weather or track conditions. So thanks for watching this video. Now, hopefully you can get out and ride and enjoy your new four-stroke performance ECU tune.